Today we'll be starting our next topic, invoicing plan. So the topics that we're going to cover, they are what is invoicing plan, types of invoicing plan, differentiate between periodic and partial invoicing plans, create periodic invoicing plan, create partial invoicing plan, carry out the automatic settlement of the invoicing plan items, and customizing of invoicing plans. So first of all, we'll start with a business example that where and why we'll be using invoicing plan. So your company says, suppose your company is using leasing contract or similar transaction. Your company wants to greatly reduce the time required to enter manual documents in purchasing and invoice verification. You want to generate automatic invoices on the due dates. Now what does it mean? So basically um, invoicing plan is used uh, in the cases of say like a rental agreement. Okay, so for example, um, we have a say we need to take rent from a company or from the uh, from someone. So I can say rental agreement. For example, you can create a rental agreement for a purchase order. We need to take rent for the next one year or a similar transaction. It can be a rental agreement. It can be say uh, we our company is doing some maintenance work for someone. It can be for maintenance charges. Could be anything. So basically, in the previous uh, topics that we have seen basically in the standard SAP MM procedure what we do is we create a first we create a purchase order and then next step we do is from the purchase order what we do is we create a goods receipt and finally we do a invoice verification so the difference will be this is something used in the physical goods Okay, where you have the physical goods with some value. So here we're talking about something more like a service type of thing, like rental agreement. So here, what will happen is this step will be removed. So just remove this one. So we'll create a purchase order, a special type of purchase order that I'll show in a minute. And then from there, we'll be creating a straight away new invoice verification. Now within this part as well, there's another step you can add if you want in the existing process. What we do here is vendor will send us an invoice. Okay, they will send an invoice and then we'll do the invoice verification and then we will be paying them, right? So as I said, here in the case of rental agreement, we'll remove this part here. So just remove this part. So there will be no goods received and this part needs to be removed as well. Okay, so vendor will not send us any invoice. So that's our contract with the vendor. So remove this one. Only thing that will happen is invoice verification and this will be happening automatically. We do not need to do a manual uh, invoice verification or send the vendor a manual invoice. It can be automated. Okay, it can be, again you can do it manually, but again it can be automated. Okay, so you can see here, we will have automatic process where you just create a purchase order for a rental agreement and from there system will start creating the uh, invoices uh, automatically. So we'll see that practically in a minute as well. So that's a business example. So first we'll start with some theory part and then we'll do some practical. So what is invoicing plan? So in theory, the invoicing plan is a special type of purchase order that I'll show in a minute. The invoicing plan enables you to schedule the desired dates for the creation of invoices relating to the planned procurement of materials or services independent of the actual goods received. As I said, goods received is ignored in this process. Okay, so we will not be doing the goods received. We'll straight away skip the goods received process. And invoicing plan lists the dates on which you wish to create and pay the invoices. So, when you create the invoicing plan or a special type of purchase order, in that you will be entering the dates on what dates we need to pay to the vendor. And the automatic uh, invoice verification system, it will pay the vendor on the dates that we have put. For example, it can be a, like if it's a rental agreement, it can be the first day, first uh, day of every month. So system will automatically pay the vendor 
on the first day of every month. So we have basically two types of purchase, uh, invoicing plans. Okay, types of invoicing plans. We have two types. One is periodic invoicing plan. Okay, where something is happening periodically, like every month, every year, every fortnight. And the second one is partial invoicing plan. Okay, so let's discuss. So partial is not periodic, but it's a little bit different. Let us discuss both of them one by one. First of all, we have is periodic invoicing plan. What is periodic invoicing plan? So in periodic invoicing plan, something like you can see in this screen here, what happens is you, as the name is saying periodic, okay, so it can be like as I said, periodic can be every month, every year, every six month, every fortnight, every week. So on a periodic basis, we pay the vendor. Okay, it can be as I said, it can be a rental, it can be something else. So here, if you look at the screen here, here you can notice that uh, here, periodic invoicing plan. And here you can see on the last day of every month. Okay, so on March 30th, we'll pay the, we'll pay the amount. Okay, on the last day of the next month, we'll pay the amount again, again, so on. Every month on the last date, we'll be paying the vendor that amount. Okay, and as I said, it will be automatic. It can be done automatic. So that's what it's saying here. So invoice is generated automatically. And there are some customizing as well, which I will talk about later on at the end of the topic. Okay. All right. So let us do some practicals. So I'll be creating a periodic invoicing plan, right? So I will be creating a periodic invoicing plan. So here what we do is basically we create a purchase order. Okay, when I say we create a purchase order, we have different types of purchase orders, which I will talk in the other topic later on. But for now, we use a purchase order called FO. Okay, frame. Frame order. Frame order. So when you do the transaction is same again, ME 21 and So if I go to ME 21 and enter here, maybe you have never noticed before, but here in the drop down, you can see here by default, we have a standard purchase order. Okay. We never change it, but by default, we have this one. And as I said, we'll talk about this one in the future topics later on. But for now, if you see the drop down here, you will see different types of purchase order, right? Um, so here we have the F. O as well framework okay so that's a full name framework order framework order so fo we need to use for this purpose framework order or you can call it frame order and here we need to um, enter all the vendors like we do but the one point to be noted here is in our system um, when you use a vendor the vendor you should be using is of type uh, account group 001. Earlier we use other account group KRED. Let me open another screen here. So when you create a new vendor in XK01, like we did earlier, here you also need to select an account group, right? So earlier we used um, K R E D that one K R E D right but there's some setting behind this uh, account groups that we'll talk about later on in the customizing of in other topics but for now you need to make sure that the vendor that you'll be using should be of type 001 because as I said if you use something else it will not work I'll tell you why okay so for now we need a vendor like with this uh, account group Okay, so I'm going to create a new vendor right now. So to be quick, I will copy from the other one and I will press enter. So you can see a warning at the bottom that the reference vendor, this reference vendor is KRED. Okay, so that is fine. Just keep copying, press enter.